I have decided to do my expert testimony over cryptography. Cryptography, put simply in layman's terms, is the ability to hide a message uh, using various techniques. There's a ton of them out there, and it would be impossible for me to cover them all in this single speech, which I'll try to keep down to the five-minute mark, but forgive me if I go over it, because cryptography is extremely complex and difficult to explain. But I'll try to keep it to a single a single blanket principle, if you will, something that can apply to all the people in the class and the teacher as well. Specifically, passwords. Passwords are cryptog cryptographic in nature. They, they rely on a, usually a single word, but in some cases if you're weird, <laughs> you use two or three words. But it, most of the time, I'm just going to assume that it, usually it's one word. And uh, mine, personally, uh, my very old one was 1812 Overture, which was a favorite song of mine. I don't use that password anymore for any of my accounts. I've changed them all, but that was my password. And it was my favorite song as a child. It was something from V for Vendetta. It was something as simple as that. And my friend who I'll keep the name of anonymous, but this is important. My friend figured it out. I had told him that my favorite song was 1812 Overture. And that's all he needed. That's all he needed to get into my accounts. And he did exactly that. And specifically my Facebook. He got into my Facebook account and, you know, messed with some of my stuff there and it was extremely frustrating. Me and him have never been on good terms since, but that's besides the point. Point is, the the password that was very complicated. I mean, it, it's f four numbers, overture, and in in all, that's twelve characters. A twelve character password, no spaces, and it, I mean anything in it could have been capitalized. So, really, at a random guess, this would be impossible to figure out. But all he needed was to know that that was my favorite song. And that's it. Yeah, he just needed to m know my username, Ryan Watkins 51 and go into my account. And he messed everything up. He, he messed everything up. Yeah, all for a joke. And now, the purpose of that story is to convey just how how important cryptography is and how easy it is for people to figure out your passwords and how really it's not at all secure. It at, their, at its core, a password, uh, depending on the amount of characters you use, should be unbreakable, at least to a human. But to a computer, it's a very different story. If you just tell, if you give a computer a certain amount of inputs, depending on the program you use, and if you're really this tech savvy, you could theoretically just put a certain amount of inputs in. If you know this person's uh, pet's name, their favorite number, color, uh, their name, their birthday, their uh, favorite music favorite composer, it, all the all these different little uh, inputs, the little tidbits of information that could possibly make up a password, if you put that into a program, it can test all of these different uh, guesses. It, it, it's called a brute force hack. It's not very complicated. It, it's nothing like the deeper levels that cryptography can offer, but uh, a brute force hack is what typically most people think of whenever they think of hacking. Now, hacking has a lot more to do with not just the technological aspect of it, of hitting as many guesses as you can, but educated guesses, which is why I mentioned earlier all these different inputs. So, going back to the story I, I, I told you about, 1812 Overture, my favorite song, that's all he needed to know, and he got into my account. Now, imagine if... Instead of just a blind guess like he did, he had all these different, all this different information about me, and he put it into a program that randomized a bunch of passwords depending on the input that he put in, and that makes it even more easier. Um, this is why a lot of websites have a, uh, a threshold of how many passwords you can test at one time before it just locks you out for a temporary period. That's the entire reason for it, because brute force hacks, they rely on volume and the allowance to commit to that. If, if you cut it off at three, then that's three guesses out of the possible thousands that it has to make before it gets the right password. This is why so many, uh, so many 
websites have that safety feature. As much as I would like to get into the deeper details of cryptography and all the history behind it, I would like to personally recommend a book to you if you'd like to learn more about it. It's from Simon Singh. I personally borrowed this from my college algebra teacher. If you can get it in there. It's The Code Book by Simon Singh. The Science and Secrecy from Ancient, ancient Egypt to Quantum crypto Cryptography, which, just so you know, is purely theoretical at the moment, but with how quickly science is advancing, it's completely possible that we could run into uh, being capable of uh, quantum computing within the near future. But that book is all you need to learn about cryptography, how, how it's adva advanced over the years, it even tells you about how the Arabs, I, I don't remember exactly which nation it was, I, I believe the Persian Empire was able to decrypt uh, Greek codes, which at the time they were unbreakable, but because the Arabs were at a specific technological, or a, a specific point in their technology where they could decrypt the, or they had the information at their disposal, they could figure out the exact percentage at which English letters appeared in messages on average, so there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Now, each one of those appears in the grand scheme of a message a certain amount of time, so let's say A appears 3 to 5 percent. Now, you find the character in this supposed hidden message, or I mean uh, an encrypted message, and you find which character in there appears exactly 3 to 5 percent of the time, and then you plug A in for that. It's really just about variable... Uh, the plugging in variables. You take the special character, say a Greek delta, and plug A for, in for that. Now, say B only appears 2% of the time. Now, you find which character appears 2% of the time in this large message. By the way, it can only work on large messages because short messages don't have enough a, a large enough pool of data to take from to be accurate for this sort of assessment. But anyway, that's besides the point. It, it, basically, keep finding which which of these special characters that are in place of these English characters. Find which one uh, matches the percentile, and then plug it in for that. And eventually, once you fill in all the blanks, you should be able to take everything else. Well, because then you'll start getting full words, theoretically anyway, assuming that it, it, it works. And most of the time it does, because mathematically it, it should. It, it's a near impossibility that it wouldn't. And... Well, that, really, that's the most interesting thing to me. I, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but that, at its core, is cryptography, and it's so interesting. And really, I think a lot of you, uh, a lot of you, regardless of your interest or any sort of, or having any sort of passion for cryptography, could learn a lot from it, because cryptography goes from passwords to uh, being able to encrypt entire books and hide the information hidden with them. Thank you for coming here, and I hope some of you have the same passion as I do for the subject.